Welcome to this short presentation on caseous lymphadenitis in sheep. Caseous lymphadenitis, or CLA, is a bacterial infection caused by the bacteria Corynebacterium pseudotuberculosis. This bacteria enters the body through skin abrasions, and these can be invisible to the eye. They can be so microscopic or by inhalation or ingestion. Once it's entered the body, it travels to the local lymph node. The lymph node is part of your immune system. And if you're ill and the glands in your neck swell up, then those are your lymph nodes. Once it's in the lymph node, the bacteria multiply and an abscess forms. It may spread to other sites in the body from here. Once the abscess forms, that protects the bacteria from antibiotics because the abscess makes it difficult for the antibiotics to penetrate into the abscess to kill the bacteria. This means that treatment with antibiotics is neither practical nor cost effective for CLA. In most cases, CLA is introduced to a flock by the addition of an infected animal. It could also potentially be introduced on clothing or equipment. For example, if you're handling sheep and an abscess bursts and you have pus on your clothing, then that, and you then go and handle other sheep, then that could spread the infection. And if you have sheep with abscesses within their lungs, then they could spread the infection um, in the air. It will survive in the environment for a couple of months and also it will survive for about a day in sheep dip. It is killed by sunlight and anything that increases the stocking density, so housing in close contact when gathered, for example for shearing, increases the risk of spread. So what will you see? You might see sheep that develop lumps and bumps around their head and neck because there are a number of lymph nodes that you can feel and see around their head and neck. However, in some cases you won't see anything at all and it's estimated that about a quarter of infected animals may only have internal abscesses, for example, in their lungs and other tissues. It can also in some cases cause mastitis. And these animals with internal abscesses, they may lose weight and, and become thinner than other animals in the flock. But of course, not all lumps are CLA, which means you can't assume just because a sheep has a lump on its head or around its neck that it is infected with CLA. So these pictures show a range of lumps and bumps and none of them are CLA. So if you have an abscess that bursts, you can get your vet to take a sample of that and that can be sent to the laboratory for bacteriology to see if they can grow the bacteria that causes CLA. And if that bacteria is grown, then that confirms your diagnosis of CLA. So what effect on a flock could CLA have? Well, if you're selling animals, then it may reduce your income. If they are losing condition, then they're not as productive. In animals going to the abattoir, if there are abscesses, they may need trimmed. And if there are several abscesses, the whole carcass may be condemned. If there are animals with abscesses and they perhaps get nicked at shearing time, then you would have to call a halt and everything would have to be cleaned up and disinfected. It can make it difficult or impossible to show animals. And it is possible for this bacteria to infect people, although that is quite rare. So how can you reduce the risks from CLA? You can buy from trusted sources and good boundary biosecurity will prevent nose to nose contact and also straying sheep from other properties. If equipment is being used on multiple farms, then it's important it's cleaned and disinfected between holdings. If you're buying animals, then examine them, check them for lumps and bumps, and you can blood test them as well. 
If you have animals with clinical signs that are losing condition for no obvious reason, or you have animals with abscesses that you can sample, then get them checked to find out if it is CLA or not. If you identify infected animals, then they should be separate, separated from uninfected animals. In contrast to some of the other iceberg diseases, lambs born to infected animals are not necessarily a risk. They may not be infected. If you know that positive animals have grazed a particular field and you are able to leave it free of sheep for two months, then it should be safe for other sheep to graze. In flocks where there are issues with CLA, in some cases, testing programmes have been put in place where all the animals, the whole flock, over six months of age, are examined and blood tested every three to six months. And positive animals are then culled or separated to create a clean flock and a dirty flock. There's no vaccine for CLA licensed in the UK. There are vaccines abroad that can be imported under special license, but you should be aware that vaccinated animals will test positive in the blood test. So how do you confirm CLA? By bacteriology, by testing pus from abscesses. If the Carinobacterium pseudotuberculosis has grown, then that's an absolute diagnosis. The blood test that's available isn't perfect, and you should bear that in mind before going down the road of setting up a testing program, but also when you're testing added animals. Just be aware that the blood test isn't 100% accurate in all cases. So you get both false positive results where uninfected animals will test positive, but you can also get false negative results. So potentially 13 in 100 infected animals will test negative. And the reason for that is because the bacteria is contained within the abscess. And in some cases, that means that because the immune system can no longer see it, the antibody levels can go down and they will test negative in a blood test. The fact that the blood test isn't perfect shouldn't put you off using it, but it also makes it important to keep on checking animals for clinical signs and investigating cases of ill thrift by post-mortem examination. Thank you for listening. Please get in touch if you have any questions.